When it comes to providing enteral nutrition, you need to know if you have an open system or a closed system. My name is Mitchell Zandis, and this is CNU. If you've seen my video on tube feeding methods, then you know that enteral nutrition can be administered using the continuous, cyclic, intermittent, or bolus method. But did you know that within these methods, there are two types of delivery systems? That's right. A tube feeding regimen can either be an open system or it can be a closed system. Both systems can achieve the same goal of safely meeting a patient's nutritional needs. Nevertheless, there are some advantages and disadvantages for each one that must be considered whenever an order is placed. An open system is when formula is transferred from a container to a syringe or feeding bag before it is infused into a feeding tube. The formula usually comes in 237 milliliter or 250 milliliter containers that are labeled as ready to feed. So, for a patient receiving a continuous or cyclic infusion with an open system, multiple small bottles of formula must be poured into a feeding bag. This makes it possible to administer through a mechanical feeding pump or by the force of gravity. A closed system is when formula comes ready to be infused directly from a sterile container. Instead of having several smaller containers, a closed system features larger containers that have a volume of 1 liter or 1.5 liters. Some textbooks say they come in 2 liter bottles too, but I've never actually seen these in practice, and I'm not sure if you can find them anymore, at least here in the United States. Anyway, these containers are labeled as ready to hang. You don't need to pour them into a separate bag to feed the patient. The formula gets attached to the IV pole and infused directly from the bottle through the feeding tube. Whether a patient should receive an open system or a closed system will be dictated by a few different factors. For one, it will always be influenced by the formula that's available in your medical institution. Most commercial formulas come in ready-to-feed and ready-to-hang versions, but not every institution is going to have both versions at all times. As a clinician, you may be faced with a situation where you want to use a specific formula, but only have one version of it. In this case, the decision between an open or closed system may be made for you. Another factor that can influence your choice is the feeding method. For example, if a patient is going to receive enteral nutrition using the bolus method with a feeding syringe, then trying to use a 1 liter bottle doesn't make much sense. The smaller bottles are perfect for pouring out into a syringe to be administered rapidly and then discarded. Conversely, if a patient is going to receive at least one liter of formula using one of the other feeding methods, and one liter bottles are available to you, then it may be more practical to use the one liter bottles than having to open and pour a bunch of smaller bottles into a bag. Outside of these two scenarios, factors that should be considered when deciding between an open or closed system include the following. Risk of contamination nutrient delivery, and cost. Let's take a closer look at each of these. The first factor we're going to explore is the risk of contamination. Compared to a closed system, an open system comes with a higher risk of contamination. This is because it requires human contact before it is infused and the formula is exposed to air. All formulas come in a sterile container, but as soon as the formula is opened and poured out, the risk of bacterial growth goes up. When contaminated formula is provided to the patient, it can lead to foodborne illness and other hospital-acquired infections. Open systems can be safely provided as long as facilities are willing to have policies and standards in place to ensure compliance with proper hand hygiene and handling of materials. 
An important consideration here is the hang time, or the number of hours formula can hang before it's considered unsafe. The current recommendation from Aspen is that open systems in a medical institution can have a maximum hang time of 8 hours. But if the formula is reconstituted from powder, then it is only 4 hours. So, staff can only pour enough formula in a bag to last this amount of time, meaning they may have to repeat the process anywhere from 3 to 6 times per day. Open systems in the home setting have an extended hang time of 12 hours. Closed systems can have a hang time for up to 48 hours as long as the tubing used to administer it remains the same. If for any reason the administration set is changed, then the recommended hang time is reduced to 24 hours. This means that in most cases, the formula only needs to be manipulated a maximum of one time per day, making the closed system less time consuming and not as labor intensive. The second factor we're going to explore is nutrient delivery. Here, we're asking, which feeding system helps the patient receive more nutrients? To my knowledge, this question has only been explored in two studies. The first was published in 2012. Silva et al. found that changing the type of delivery system did not affect the feeding of critically ill adults, as there was no clinically relevant difference in protein and energy intake using open system or closed system. The second was published in 2015. Atkins and Phillips collected retrospective and prospective data from 30 patients with an open feeding system and 30 patients with a closed feeding system. The total number of feeding days was 325 days and 237 days respectively. They found that patients with the open system received an average of 74% of the ordered volume, whereas patients with the closed system received an average of 84% of the ordered volume. This study suggests that there may be a slight advantage to nutrient delivery with a closed system, which may be attributable to the longer hang time and lower demand for labor that was previously mentioned. Yet it's only one study with a small sample size, so more research is needed in this area. The third factor we're going to explore is cost. The available cost analyses on this subject have shown that a closed feeding system costs slightly more to operate than an open feeding system. For instance, data from the University of Virginia Health System showed that they spent an additional $4.8,000 to use primarily closed systems than they would have if they continued to use open systems. The majority of this increase came from the formula, which is more expensive per milliliter in the larger container. However, this analysis didn't factor in the nursing time that was saved and put toward other aspects of care. A previous analysis from the same healthcare system did estimate the cost of labor. It found that the additional time nursing has to spend to administer an open system more than doubled the cost of it. One additional factor that I think is worth mentioning is nursing satisfaction. This has not been examined in much detail, but the cost analysis by the University of Virginia Health System also sent out a survey to see how nurses felt about the two types of feeding systems. The survey revealed that 88% of the nurses preferred the closed system over the open system, finding it easier to use and manage, and producing a comparable amount of waste. This is significant because nurses are the ones who are responsible for handling the formula in the hospital, among many other essential tasks. So, we should strive to do anything to make their jobs easier and more enjoyable, as long as it doesn't result in a decrease in the quality of care. In summary, the open system is when formula is poured out of the container before it is infused. The closed system is when formula is infused directly from the container. 
The open system has a maximum hang time of 8 hours in a medical institution, while the closed system has a maximum hang time of 48 hours as long as the tubing used to administer it remains the same. The open also appears to have higher cost when labor is considered and may lead to lower nursing satisfaction, whereas the closed system may lead to superior nutrient delivery. You can watch more of my videos on enteral nutrition by clicking on the playlist here. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.